We're here at the Rise Center with our tensile testing unit. What we can do with that is apply a tensile force to a sample and we can measure the tensile strength of it and the elongation of it, as well as several other properties, the peak load, the ultimate elongation, the max elongation, tear strength, several different properties we can look at using this unit for modified bitumen roofing or for some of our liquids materials. I have a sample of Peridian 20 TG. It's our one of our modified bitumen base sheets. This has a fiberglass reinforcement in it. So I'm gonna load the sample into the unit here. Two sets of jaws. When I start my test, these jaws will begin to separate. Uh, at a predetermined speed, this is for ASTM D5147. So we're going to come over here, zero out our force, and start the sample. The reinforcement's been broken, so this is all elongation of the product, of the blend that you're seeing. You can see that nice amber color of the blend, and that's showing the elongation of the blend itself and not the fiberglass anymore. So here on the y-axis is where the force is measured that was applied to that sample. So here we can see this is the break point or the, where the peak load, the tensile strength is reached right here. That's where the fiberglass broke. Uh, and that's what we're seeing here is the peak load. And what you're seeing here now is the graph is starting to drop down. We're losing that load. And what we're picking up here now, this is the elongation. So this is, this is our X axis. We're measuring this elongation at this point. Elongation at peak load, what that is, is, is really what it says. It's the elongation that's reached, the stretch of that product. So for this sample, it is the fiberglass. So that's the how far it stretched up until it reached that peak load. So there's your elongation at peak load. Another critical point outside of peak load is the ultimate elongation. Ultimate elongation is measured after you reach 5% of the peak load. So here we've had the load has been decreasing down, load's going down, and that measurement is not taken until we hit, we drop below 5% of this peak load itself. We define ultimate elongation at 5% because there's a lot of things that go on right at the very end of the uh, of this test. But once again, we're still seeing that nice amber color all the way throughout. Here we've dropped below 5% of that peak load. So that's where our ultimate elongation was recorded. We formulate so that we have a high elongation, ultimate elongation in the very beginning. So the product that goes directly on the roof, we have a very high ultimate elongation. And we know that when we install that product and it sits there and it goes through UV exposure, heat, cold, all the movement of the roof throughout the lifetime of that roof, 20 plus years, that we know that we're gonna have enough polymer based in our formulation that we're still gonna be able to have this pull back and forth, this ultimate elongation, the blend elongation, as I like to call it, of the product. So here we have a uh, competitor base sheet product. This has got a fiberglass reinforcement in it. With this product, it's got a higher filler content, lower polymer content. If you watch here, start to apply the load. We're gonna see that reinforcement, it's broken. Seen a little bit of elongation there, but as you can see quickly, we're starting to see that blend tear. Now we're at about the ultimate elongation point. This product, we got 4% elongation just with the reinforcement itself. So the blend was only about four and 14, so about 10% blend elongation, uh, ultimate elongation around 14%. The more filler you have in your blend, when you, when you go above you know, 30%, when you go above 40% filler, you know, you, you've essentially gone from an elastic membrane to more of a plastic. So you're gonna have a more rigid membrane. You can kind of see that in this product itself. It's a lot more rigid. It's not as flexible, and that's because it has a higher filler content. If you don't have a high enough polymer load in the beginning, we know it's gonna degrade. It's gonna degrade quickly, and you're not gonna have that polymer to allow for that elasticity throughout the lifetime of that roof. So once you reach around that 10, 15 year mark, you don't have enough elasticity in your blend to overcome that substrate movement, to overcome the movement you have at multiple times a day when the sun's at the, the highest point or when it's cold at night. So here in my right hand, we have our, uh, this is our Peridian 20 TG, our fiberglass SPS base sheet. And in my left hand is a competitor fiberglass base sheet. If you look really close here, we use a lot finer sand for our surfacing, for our parting agent for our products. And what this does is using this coarser product, it displaces asphalt. So it cheapens the product. It allows it to, uh, you can still get that desired thickness for ASTM or desired thickness for your finished product. But what you're doing is you're, you're, you're cheating the customer because you're, you're selling them more sand than you are actual blend.